Today we have food choices that our ancestors could never have dreamed of. Food has become about so much more than just survival, and enjoyment of food has become one of the top pastimes in our lives. But not all foods are created equally. Some of our food comes with alarming costs to the natural world and our climate. As populations grow and the Western diet takes hold around the world, the global food system has become one of the biggest environmental pressures of our time. To have any hope of avoiding the worst effects of ecological collapse and climate change, we will need to see dramatic changes to what we eat in the years ahead. But what is a climate-friendly diet? What kinds of food does it involve? And can they be produced sustainably here in Ireland? As the global population heads towards 10 billion people and diets change, more and more land is needed for food production. This is a major cause of climate change and environmental destruction around the world. But is it possible to have a healthy and climate-friendly diet that can feed everyone? This was the question that the renowned medical journal, The Lancet, set out to answer. The Lancet proposed a diet plan that could sustainably meet the nutrition needs of the planet's growing population. Connor Spacey is the executive chef and culinary director of Food Space, a large catering company which provides over a million meals per year and they're uniquely committed to changing our broken food system by providing only sustainable food. I'm meeting him in one of his restaurants here in Dunleary. Connor, tell me a little bit about this Lancet diet. It's been all over the media, but what is it? The Lancet report came about because the question was asked, how do we feed 10 billion people by 2050? Because that's where our population of the planet is going. How do we do it sustainably? So if you think of all the deforestation that's going on across the planet, a lot of it, deforestation is to grow feed, to feed cattle. So the more consumption of beef the more land we've got to use to feed the cattle. So putting that into 2050 and looking at it in the future and go, well, how does that look? How do 10 billion people survive on that? Well, we're going to have no land left because what we're doing is we're cutting all the forest down to, to rare animal protein. And if we keep eating the way we're eating, we cannot feed 10 billion people. Nearly 80% of the world's agricultural land is used for livestock farming. But this only produces less than 20% of the world's food calories. If land that's currently used to grow crops to feed livestock was instead used to grow crops for human consumption, we could feed an additional 4 billion people right now. Or alternatively, this land could be given over to the restoration of lost natural habitats. What we are doing is we're taking the Lancet report and making it local. So if you take a Lancet report and, and bring it to Ireland, what does that look like in Ireland? So to me, this is what it looks like. It's taking a global outlook and, and making it local. Individualising it. For individualising it into, your, into wherever you live globally. So in Inc, we're launching a new menu, which is entirely plant-based. But as a side order, you can order a side order of chicken or beef or fish. Connor, tell me, what kind of things will you be offering then on this new menu? One of our most popular sellers is always like a burger, because this is yeah. a cafe-style setting and the whole lot. And this, this is our new one, which is this a beetroot. It's a beetroot burger, um, wow. homemade fries, homemade slaw, ketchup. Oh, oh no, you're not going to tell me what's in it, are you? <laughs> Obviously, beetroot is the star of the show, so 80% of that is beetroot. That is amazing. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Oh my God. And it's a beetroot burger, not because of the colour of it or to replicate meat. It's a beetroot burger because beetroots are great this time of the year. And that will change as the seasons change. So when beetroots come out of season, we'll change into something else. So for me, for someone at home, what are the core principles? If I decided, look, I want to abide by the Lancet diet, what do I have to do daily? Food waste is the first thing in your home because that's the biggest thing in your home. Buy only what you need. Don't get caught up in, in buying stuff that looks good on a shelf or buy one, get one free, all this kind of stuff. To buy local is better. It cuts down on any carbon footprint within tra the food travelling. There's no air miles on it. Sustainability begins with people and the food chain begins with farmers. And you're also, you're, you're helping the economy that you're living in. 
And what about for people who, who really love meat? Try to use it less, but don't have it that every day our dinners are made around uh, meat proteins being the star of the show and the rest are all just secondary. Kind of turn it on its head and just think differently and make the vegetables the star of the show. And if you want to have meat, have it, but cut down on it. So I suppose, Connor, some of the really basic things then I can do is I can buy Irish, I can buy what's in season and local, and I really could try and reduce my meat intake. And that's not that difficult. We all know this needs to be done, so let's just do it. Connor has shown me that to try and reduce the dramatic impact that food production is having on our climate, we need to reduce our meat intake, stop food waste, and eat more locally grown, in-season plants. But when Irish diets are so focused on meat, how hard will it be to access convenient plant-based meals? There are already small seeds of a movement towards plant-based foods in Western countries, with more and more people going vegetarian or even vegan. To cater for a new demand for convenient, plant-based meat alternatives, meat replacement startups are cropping up everywhere. There are now burgers made entirely of plants, designed to look, taste, and even bleed like real meat. Critically, some of these burgers produce 90% less greenhouse gases and use 90% less land than traditional beef burgers. Plant-based alternatives to meat may have the potential to become big business and eventually challenge even the livestock industry. One of the success stories of this new movement towards plant-based foods is Irish startup Strong Roots. They're now all over the supermarket shelves in Ireland, Europe, and even in the US. So I'm gonna go meet the founder to find out the business potential of this new market. So normally we put these in the oven, but actually you can do these on a pan. And, They're good uh, size as well. A few people have told me that you can do these in the toaster, but uh, I don't know if that works. <laughs> okay. How's the business actually doing though, Sam? Uh, really well. Um, we've just launched in the US. Uh, there's over 3,000 stores there now, which brings our total up close to about 5,000. 5,000 different shops. That's Absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's incredible. In less than five years. To think we started in, uh, you know, the plowing championships in 2015 in a field and now we're, you know, selling globally to, to multiple countries is amazing. That is absolutely remarkable. Yeah, yeah. How much does the climate crisis affect why you are making plant-based foods? We started out as a very simple brand company selling sweet potato fries and in the last three years we've completely pivoted on the basis of consumer request to be a, a cause-based company. Sam, what makes this burger here more sustainable than a beef burger that I could buy in the shops? Let me show you. Oh, okay. I've done some uh, yeah, cauliflower later, hash browns <laughs> and some uh, pea and wakame burgers and also some spinach bites, which are looking a little bit overdone, but they still taste great. <laughs> so we've <laughs> got um, a few of each of these to try. Basically, the production of vegetables. It uses a lot less water, a lot less energy and a lot less land to be produced. So it doesn't, it doesn't get more sustainable than this. We have a, a planet that it's heating up and hasn't been slowing down. And reducing meat consumption and increasing vegetable consumption is one of the ways that we can, we can counteract that. So Sam, what are all of the products here then? So in your hand, you've got one of our cauliflower hash browns. This is mostly cauliflower, yeah, is it? Yeah, this is, this is uh, started earlier this year um, at a very small distribution, and now it's probably our second or third biggest product. It's really, really good. These are uh, pieces of our pea and wakame seaweed burger. First burger on the market with some uh, aquaculture in it. With these, you can see, you know, those black specks are the pieces of seaweed and the crumb. Mm. You can see the green peas and the potato in, yeah. in the middle. You know, it's all open, honest, real. Food. You're dead right, it looks like food. Yep. It actually, that you there's can a pea. see. <laughs> there's, there's, a pea. A, there's a whole bee. Yeah. It's absolutely true. That, kind of, that is really important. The shelf life of frozen food is normally about two years or more, so you're not throwing it away. You don't have to worry about it going off in the bottom of your refrigerator. Um, so, frozen's the way forward. Carbon miles are obviously an issue. I would absolutely love to see that the food we ate in Ireland 
was produced in Ireland. Could you produce all of this from Irish-based products? We could grow all of the ingredients, bar one or two. Our original goal and our future vision is to produce things at home uh, for export. Uh, the problem is, is that you know we don't um, grow them at the scale that we need them for the moment. But you'd like them to be sourced here if they could. All the absolutely all day. Um, it was the original vision of the business. We had to go abroad because we couldn't find an option here. Changing diets and environmentally conscious consumers are driving the increasing demand for plant-based foods. But is Ireland ready to take advantage of these new opportunities?